everyone and welcome to the Mousy Makes podcast. Uh, a special welcome if you're a new subscriber, but it's lovely to have everybody here. Uh, in case you haven't met me before, my name is Helen and I live in Durham in the northeast of England. And I mostly chat to you here about the things I've been making and doing. And I just enjoy having you along. And if you'd like to make a comment or just give me a like or uh, even subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, that would be brilliant. When I first started uh, making YouTube videos, I decided that it would be very, very easy to become a bit obsessed by how many views you'd had and how many subscribers you had. So when I, when I discovered that um, you could switch off the option to show publicly how many subscribers that you have, I decided I would do that because pers it was more for me than anything. I just didn't want to keep looking. However, I, I looked recently and I've, I've just found out today that I've actually got 300 subscribers now, which is absolutely amazing. I know it's not a lot compared to loads of YouTube uh, channels out there, but I think that's really nice. I, did, I never started this off to try and build a huge following or anything. I just wanted to be part of the creative community. And so that's really fantastic. 300. I feel like I ought to celebrate in that some way. I know, I know some people do um, something called giveaways. Um, I have no idea how you do something like that. So maybe I ought to go away and learn how to do that. Anyway, that's. Uh, I'm just happy, even if there's only one or two of you watching. Um, I just like having a chat and showing you what I've been doing. So today, what's going to happen today? I am going to just give you a hopefully a quick update on the projects I'm working on at the moment and then I'm going to share with you some more of the books from my bookshelves here from the, this shelf here today. Uh, I've already done two of the bookshelves in previous podcasts and um, I'm going to do another one today. So and then I am going to just take you out on a little visit to a place I went to last week which is really lovely nice uh, fairly sunny day and oh, we had a lovely time there so I'll tell you more about that later. So making. Okay so you might know that I am busy working my way through a kind of a six makes challenge. I chose six things that I particularly wanted to get a, make a start on <clears throat> and get finished this year and I'm doing quite well with that. So I'm, I'm not going to give you a complete rundown on the ones I've already shown you that I've finished. But the first thing is a da da is my Nook sweater. It is all finished and blocked. And I cannot tell you how pleased I am with that. Hopefully I am now putting in here a photo of me wearing it. If it's not too bad a photo, otherwise you'll just have to look at me holding this up. <laughs> anyway, it's been really lovely and I'll put all the details about it in the in the description box below. Uh, so, on, so I'll try not to chat here too long. So it's absolutely great. I love the colour. I love the yarn. It's it's nice and soft. It's 100% wool, but it's it's really nice and soft. And I would definitely use this uh, yarn again, Cascade 220, uh, iron weight. Yeah, iron weight. And they do a few other colours in it. So I might even make another one the same as this. I like it so much. I'm not wearing it now because it's actually still quite warm. So that's that finished, Ray. And what else am I doing? Oh yes, I showed you last time that the fingerless mitts from this book here, Woodland Knits, uh, were just too small. So I've taken it out. I haven't restarted them. Um, so I'll tell you more about that next time. I'm going to go up a needle size and in the hope that it's going to be okay. And if not, then I might change the yarn and just not do four. It's meant to be four ply yarn, but you know, maybe, I don't know. Right, okay, so that's those. And then, um, what else am I doing? Oh no, that's a new project. Oh yes, I think the only other one I'm showing you today from the six makes is the uh, autumn wreath that I'm doing. And I'm going to use this wooden hoop here. I'm going to actually wind some wadding around it and then some felt around it and I'll fix that on uh, because I want to keep it as lightweight as possible. I don't want to use one of the um, 
kind of the more grassy type of wreaths which are really lovely because that's got I've got to post this abroad so I want to try and keep the weight down but I have uh, done yeah a small number of the items now and chosen autumny colours from my stash so I haven't got all the colours I might like to have but you know I'm trying not to buy any more yarn for it and I think that is all I'm going to mention about the six makes today I also told you a couple of weeks ago that I'm joining in the Across the Pond shawl cal and I'm making quite good progress with that shawl. I'm not a very fast knitter, I, re I really am not. And I, I think I only seem to make a lot of things because they're mostly small things, aren't they? Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm very happy with how that yarn is turning out. And then I... I also have an ongoing project which I've been doing for absolutely ages, which is the crocheted shawl I'm making, which that, again, that's going to be a gift for somebody. I, I haven't, uh, I just haven't worked on that for ages. I'm so busy with all these other things. And then the other thing that's a really an ongoing project, it's got no, I haven't put any, you know, time goal on, on it at all. And that's my lovely leftover sock yarn blanket which is looking really good i have got i don't know there's about 50 squares there now so it's looking quite good i haven't decided how big to make it i'm just going to keep going i'm trying to use up my leftover sock yarn so you know i want to use as much of it as possible though as i think i've said once before my box of leftover sock yarn is not going down uh very fast mind i think i could probably make a pair of socks shorty socks from what's left there well it's quite quite thin there anyway yeah so that's that one there and i have also not as part of any particular challenge just cast on um, another pair of socks just because i always have a pair of socks on the go uh, i always have this as my sock yarn sock knitting uh, project bag because I have a, a roll counter attached to it and I just permanently have written out the uh, pattern that I use for plain socks um, although I pretty much know it off by heart now <laughs> so it's just there just in case I forget right okay then so and then the only other thing to mention I think is the Enchanted Forest make along and I can't remember, I showed you this basket before. I got this as an Easter hamper. And at the moment it is housing all of the Enchanted Forest makes that I have made. And you have now seen practically everything that I've made. Um, and there are just two more characters you have yet to meet. But I don't think I want to show you that. I, want to, I think I want to keep them as a surprise. Otherwise, I'll spoil the end of the story before we've got there. So, um, but this basket, um, yeah, it's almost shaped like a little house, isn't it? And I was just contemplating whether I could kind of make a crochet panel to go around it to make it look more like a house. Yeah, yeah, just, just thinking about that now. My other idea that I had for, the, for all of these things that I've been making would be just to attach them to a wreath and hang it on my craft room wall. But then, of course, I wouldn't be able to give them to children to play with, could I? So, yeah, might not do that. I might just, I might just decorate that basket. Yeah, I'll have a think about that. Okay, <laughs> just giving myself more things to do. Um. Oh yes, one last thing that I've just started. Honestly, I've got not too many on the go at the moment. I think. Uh, yeah, these I put these little characters here to remind me uh, to tell you about the latest project. These are lovely little characters that I knitted. Sadie Souris and uh, the pattern for this one is called Sutu Bear, although I called him Benedict. And as you scroll through Instagram and see all sorts of beautiful things to make, uh, I decided I just couldn't resist making the latest pattern by that the designer of those two toys Cynthia Valet uh, and that is a little turtle uh, goodness knows why I want to make a turtle it just looks so cute I mean that's all you need isn't it all 
the excuse you need for making something. I've done exactly as the designer uh, suggested in the pattern, which was to not stuff as you go, which I, which I normally do, and I did do that for these two. But I decided to follow the instructions exactly and do the blocking and things of the turtle before putting any stuffing in. So that's going to be interesting, trying to stuff it. But I took the photo of the turtle in the bowl of warm water and things. And I just had to laugh. It just looked really funny. It looked like something from a horror movie. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It's not. It'll be. It'll, she'll be really cute when I when I finished her. So I'll I'll share that next time uh, with you. Yeah. So that's all my making for the moment. So now I'm just going to go and get down the books from this shelf here and show you some of my uh, collection of craft books. So first on the pile, crochet at home with sugar and cream. I think this was a a free came free with a magazine. Crochet magazine, possibly. And it's just got a whole range of large and small projects that use the sugar and cream cotton yarn, which I do like. I have used before, but I haven't made anything out of here. But I think I might, so I'm going to hang on to that book. And next one, Knitting from the North. Oh, you may well have seen me. Uh, showing you this one before. It's sort of uh, Scandinavian style colour work, mostly gloves and scarves, um, but with a sort of contemporary feel. And I have attempted one of the projects in here, as you can see, my, uh, which was these gloves mitts here, and um, they, oh, I've restarted them twice and haven't yet gone back to them. It was mainly because I hadn't chosen the right colours. didn't look right together. So, <laughs> yeah, you can see I was working on it there. But uh, anyway, it's a lovely book, that one. Another book that I have definitely shown you before. And I've made quite a few of the birds from here. I'll not go all the way through it. Uh, maybe there's a page with all of the birds on. I'm not sure. No. Anyway, I, I love it. I love it. I love it not only because it's got birds in it, but because it's got uh, sort of projects, things to do with the birds. It gives you display ideas. So look, we've got this lovely uh, little birdhouse. Um, it shows you how to cover... Um, wooden rings to make a wreath. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful little nest. I love that birdhouse. I mean, I really want to make that, uh, one of those. Uh, and, yeah, covering branches with felt. Making hanging hoops. And then it's got templates for making leaves out of felt. Some flowers and I love these pebbles too. So, really lovely. Yeah, the templates at the back of that excellent book. Really love it. Another book next that I've shown you before because I have made uh, the mice from here. So, I'll not spend too long on this one because I've definitely given you a good look through this one before. Um, um, I'll have to maybe leave a link to where I was talking about this book before but it's really lovely lots of different animals to choose from and then best of all clothes and accessories for them all so great book uh, this is one of my more recent acquisitions because uh, I saw my friend uh, Jeanette uh, making some things from here so again this is a book that I have I have shown you what I've made out of here. I made the uh, mouse there. Would like to make some more, actually, but, you know. <laughs> anyway, it's a lovely book there. Uh, here's a book I've had quite a long time. Kind of a knitting reference book uh, published by DK, Dorling Kindersley, who, whose books I really like. They always give you beautiful, clear 
pictures. And there's just so many ideas of different. So I like this stitch pattern gallery here. Yeah, lots of things that you could incorporate. If you're being a bit more creative and wanting to do your own thing, sort of alter patterns and things, you can come in here and look at the stitch gallery. Really, really clear pictures on how to um, do various techniques. So that's, that's really good. It's loads and loads. Yeah, we've got Fair Isle and Colour Work. Yeah, and then at the end, okay, there are lots of projects as well. Again, a large and small projects. Great, I think I have made one or two things from here, but I've used it more as a, a reference when I've wanted to look something up uh, in a book. And yeah, so there we go. Excellent book. And then uh, a similar one, well, published by Dorling Kindersley again, uh, on crochet. And I found this one even more useful because I haven't been crocheting as long as I've been knitting. And it, this book really, really helped me to understand about the different stitch lengths. Uh, so it shows you. So I didn't learn to crochet from this book. I cro learned to crochet from my mom a few years ago. But uh, I think it was, yeah. And it's got, yeah, cro projects along the way. Starting from really, really nice, simple ones. It'd be great for a... Great for a beginner, and I have made quite a lot of these things. Hmm. I should have found the page that I was going to talk about beforehand. Well, maybe it's here. Uh, yeah, it really helped me to understand about the different stitch lengths. Loads of really excellent projects in there. Yeah. So next, oh, next one is a bit of an old book. This is the first craft book that I ever had. My Learn to Sew book. And... I have just made so many of the things in here. Um, when I was a child, we didn't have a television. That was my parents' choice. And I spent a lot of my childhood making things. So here we go. A shell-shaped needle book, uh, which I've made. And the bookmarks and the butterfly brooch. A hedgehog pin cushion I made these finger pops. Actually, I've just found these in an old box. I was sorting some things from the loft. I just found those. Oh, I'll have to show you those sometime. Uh, I did make some doll's house furniture. Gosh, I've made just about everything from here. And although I guess it looks a little bit dated, um, yeah, I've made this. I have made just about every single thing here. Yes, although it looks a little bit dated, you know, these are all perfectly good patterns. Oh, there we go, Polly Dolly. I loved her. She was one of my favourite, favourite dolls. I, and I think partly because I've made her. Patchwork quilts, got all sorts of things in it. It's a really, really excellent book. And I know you can still get this book second hand because this is not my original book. Uh, I managed to buy this not so very long ago because I really, really wished I hadn't got rid of my first craft book. So I'm so happy to have that one there. Uh, next, a book about socks. Oh, making socks, lots of sock patterns in here. And I think I have made one of the pairs of socks in here. Look at those, aren't they gorgeous? I am so unadventurous when it comes to socks. So I really need to revisit this book, which I think was a gift from a kind friend. Look at those, aren't they lovely? I mean, you know, we spend ages looking online for patterns, lots of us, and then forget that sometimes we do have uh, books with patterns languishing there that we haven't tried. <laughs> Anyway, look, oh, those are gorgeous. So I think I'll have to set myself some goals for sock making and not always stick to plain vanilla socks. <laughs> uh, 
here in the series of mini knitted things that I love so much when I've shown you mini knitted woodland a few times recently so this is the safari one as you can see I don't think I even need to open the book lots and lots of tiny animals absolutely lovely and I have made some of those definitely made some for my nieces uh, they came, they came, uh, well, a couple of years ago, so before all the pandemic thing, when they were staying, they just got my knitting books and they wrote a Christmas list of things that they would like for Christmas for me to make them. And by the same author, who, and I do love this designer, uh, Mini Knitted Toys, which I'm thinking for my uh, uh, Enchanted Forest make-along, there are some ideas in here. Look, there's a castle. And, oh, there's a lovely... Oops. Ah, yes. I have made uh, these. Well, I've adapted them for part of the Enchanted Forest story. They're lovely, really. I, I don't know why. I just love making tiny things. All kinds of things in here. Anyway, that's a really good, good variety in there of different things. So that's that one. Uh, oh, lots of you will recognise this one. Um, Edward's Menagerie by Kerry Lord, who's written quite a lot of uh, crochet books now. Um, this is, I think this might have been her first one or one of the first ones that she did. And yeah, she has them different levels. I, th I like that, that if you're a beginner and I made this polar bear, as a gift for somebody. He was lovely. I mean, they're, they're absolutely super patterns. Very, very well explained. From, yeah. Really great. Highly recommend those. Uh, next, I have got, uh, well, this was a, a Molly Makes special magazine, uh, new for 2017 comic relief craft afternoon so to raise money for this charity uh one year well for 2017 at least they were encouraging people to get together and have a craft afternoon oh look at that lovely little bird and it's just got all sorts of projects all sorts of different crafts uh each by different uh, i suppose fairly well-known designers i think there's something from lucy of attic 24 uh, there, there go. There's her design, skinny scarf. So all sorts of projects in there. It's a, lo a lovely, lovely collection. And we have the Knitter's Annual. Now this one I bought when I went to the Yarndale Yarn Festival in Skipton the last time, which was in 2019, I think. Uh, the Knitter's Annual, and it's really lovely. They were lovely ladies. Sincerely, Louise, that's that's who uh, the designer is here. But it's it's like a it, what it says on the front, it's an annual. So it's got little stories in it with the knitted characters that she's got patterns for. It's got puzzles and oh, all sorts of interesting things. So I have read that, but I haven't made anything from it. But... You know, oh, look at that lovely lobster. Yeah, anyway, I would like to, but yeah, as you can see, I've got quite a few books. Uh, this is just such a beautiful book. And I have shown you this before. I've talked about this book before. One of the reasons it's beautiful is that it's covered in fabric. So it looks like fabric, doesn't it? But it actually feels like fabric. It's really soft. And I am, as you can see from the bookmark, I'm busy reading this one. Uh... I suppose it's more of an academic kind of book, um, but but it's e it's easy to read, um, and it it doesn't really have projects exactly, um, but it does show you how to do certain things and gives you ideas anyway. And written by the same author, this one, uh, Claire Wellesley Smith. Sorry, I didn't say that before. Resilient Stitch. Again, it's another one I've talked about in a previous podcast and it's also soft to the touch. Just want to stroke it. And um, yeah, as you can see from the subtitle there, it's about well-being and connection and textile art. Really, really interesting book there. 
Uh, right, next one. We're nearly through the pile. Coconut. Oh, this is another one I bought at Yarndale and haven't made anything from yet. The lovely designs. Hats and gloves, mostly, as you can see there. Very nice. Yeah, so, oh, look at that. There's just too many beautiful patterns, aren't there? We just haven't got enough hours, days, weeks <laughs> to do all of these things. But it's a really nice book. Uh, this one by Jen Weston. Yes, I've made I've made one two things out of here. And yeah, it says it's a nursery collection, although it doesn't have to be strictly for um, babies <laughs> because I have these. I've made these birds and they're hanging up in my conservatory. You might have seen them before. But a very lovely collection of nurse slightly different um, things for babies. So I suppose mostly yeah, accessories that you would put in a baby's nursery. It hasn't got clothes in it, but uh, yeah, got some really, really lovely things in it. That one. And here, oh, here's a book I've only just bought. How to embroider almost everything. So I've been getting into embroidery recently in the last few months so I really fancied having a book with some templates in that I could use to create my own kind of embroidered pictures so and it has got just about anything that you might want to embroider and space monsters they're so lovely. And I follow this uh, designer, Wendy Gratz, on uh, Instagram. So I've seen lots of the beautiful things that she does. She doesn't just embroider. Uh, she does sort of quilt blocks of all different kinds of animals and things. Really lovely. And, oh, are we nearly there? Here's Mindful Crochet uh, by Emma Leith. Oops, there we go. And... I have made quite a few other things out of here and I think I might have even shown you this before so I'm not going to spend ages going through this one you can get the general idea from my flip through here and then this is by Kate Eastwood who's uh, you'll possibly know the crocheted garlands and wreaths and this is the book that came out was it this year or last year anyway very recently more of her designs, so things for your home, table runners, cushions. Oh, look at that. Oh, dear me. Oh, these things catch my eye and think, oh, I want to make that. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Just um, showing you how to do an edging for tea towels. Beautiful. Oh, she has so many lovely ideas here. Yeah, placemats there. And textured lap blanket. Yeah, I love these blankets with the little bobbly bits in them. They're really nice. I've not done that before. So, really great book. That one, I'm looking forward to making projects from that, but I haven't started it yet. Oh, oh nearly there. <laughs> a hundred little knitted projects. This is such a lovely book. Now, I bought this book, though, really, because my older niece, Nell, got this book. It's a Christmas present from somebody uh, because we were having some zoom knitting sessions together just Nell and me uh, uh, and she was making things from this book I found it was helpful if she had any questions for me to actually have the book and of course I can never resist buying another book but it's got loads and loads actually it's probably easier just to show you the uh, picture at the start oh, this one here you get the idea all sorts of little things and yeah and Nell has made quite a few things out of here so that's great lovely book by Sarah Keane and the last one this is another fairly recently published book by Emma Leith so the same person that wrote this one mindful crochet colourful crochet and one of the reasons that I like uh, Emma's books 
is that she kind of has these extra little boxes of comment on something. Uh, in this book, it's all about colour therapy. In the Mindful Crochet, it was just lots of, um, you know, little little extra bits of things to think about through the mindfulness. So I like it that the, the books follow the same sort of pattern. Really great there. I'm just going to finish today with a little bit of video of uh, one of my recent trips. Uh, I think I'm going to save actually the, the visit that I made to a National Trust property recently for another time because I'm just going to end up with this being longer than I really want it to be. So I'm just going to take you to the seaside again and just have a, have a nice little relaxing music while you watch the sea. So that's it for today. Thank you ever so much for spending your time with me today. If you've made it to here to the end, thank you so much. And uh, I will be back again ever so soon with, with some more creative and hopefully interesting things to show you and chat about. So until then, take care and keep busy and I will see you again soon. Bye.